Hey everybody, this is Miro. Welcome back to another daily Super Mario 3D World modding video as we make our way to the release of Bowser's Fury. Now, I've done something that I think we've all wanted to do for the longest time. I've removed the auto scroll feature from Super Mario 3D World. So let's talk a little bit about how this works as Bowser just kind of sits there. So in Super Mario 3D World, there's many different camera types and it doesn't seem that you can actually edit them using Spotlight, which is the level editor for Super Mario 3D World. Instead, I I used some software called Switch Toolbox and I edited the BYML files which contains code and other tidbits. I didn't mean to knock them out that fast, I'll be honest. So all of these auto scroll levels have a camera setting called Rail. So all I had to do to stop the camera from scrolling is replace any of these rail names to say parallel and now we have the three angle camera that we have in most levels. So as you can see, Bowser's just there waiting for us and normally you're supposed to go in the warp box and keep going but now we can just leave because the camera is no longer attached to any sort of rail, and we can just go on without him. Now, unfortunately, you still can't overtake Bowser, because just the way he works, if you run towards him, it will just go at that same speed. So next up, we have 2 Dash Tank, and this one, again, is very, very interesting. Now, first of all, I'm sure you want to know what happens if we just run back. And it actually goes on for a little while, and then we have this lovely, lovely instance of just graphical amazement. I think what's more interesting is the tanks themselves. You see these tanks, they are actually moving, it's not an illusion. And the reason why that's important is that now if we're going faster than the tanks, we can actually see them coming from off screen. That was just rude. Yeah, we can completely outrun the tanks, but you're probably wondering, what about the tanks at the start? Where do they go? Do they, do they like crash into the wall or what happened? Also lovely, lovely camera once again. Bye guys, see you later. <laughs> as you can see, the tank will just keep on going. Mario 3D World working as intended. Oh, hello. I guess we were gone for a little while and uh, the rest of the stage is just fading through the wall now. That's all right, I guess. I didn't really want to see it anyway. Okay, that one's not coming through the wall. So everything has now stopped in place. So I guess it just doesn't want this one to go any further for some reason. Now we have chain link charge. And again, this one's just very interesting because, you know, we can move the camera. The game really likes it when you move the camera this way. You can, you can see the geometry really loads in. Yeah, it's just cool being able to move the camera on levels that you can't normally move the camera on, to be honest. I think it's going to... It's gonna make it interesting to see how I make this thumbnail. I've got an idea for what the thumbnail is gonna look like, but we'll, I guess we'll see. Also, by removing the auto scroll, this opens up the opportunity to beat the level backwards. Uh, I'm not gonna do that here, but maybe that will be a potential video. Who knows? But also, with the auto scroll gone, we can now look into the distance to see what's happening to these platforms. They also just kind of appear out of nowhere from this side. And it's the same deal with these platforms. They just kind of pop in from the top and disappear at the bottom. The illusion works a little bit better on these because, you know, they, they go into a wall before disappearing. And with this one again, they come straight out of a dirt wall. Yeah. Now it's time for the first train level. And this one is just incredibly interesting. So the way the train level work, from what I can tell, is... I don't think the train's moving, although I can't really tell. I think this is moving. When we jump, we actually have a little bit of momentum. But what's even stranger is we need to catch back up to the train because as soon as it starts picking- Oh no, it's picking up speed. As soon as it starts picking up speed, uh, that happens. You can see the bridge just ends off there, but you know. As soon as it starts picking up speed, it disappears. And maybe that's when the train actually stops moving. So maybe it's moving now, and then when we get past this point, um, I think all of this will just disappear. Yeah, you can see it just disappears. If you go on the tracks at all, as you can see, we will get pushed back. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I think, I think the tracks are just moving back. And if we run back on the tracks, yeah, it eventually just disappears. It's very weird. It, it's kind of hard to work out how it works. Now, another thing that's interesting is now we, although it was technically possible before, it's at least much easier to see what is actually on the other train because before it would auto scroll on this train as well so we wouldn't get to see what was on the other side i can see we can come back there's a few crates there's a one up here very nice there's some coins and that's about it there's not really a lot to see over here other than the fact that the carriage is shaking but the bullet bills on it aren't shaking now here's something interesting so normally you can actually hop onto these tracks i don't think you can actually do it on this specific train but you can do it on the other train now we can just kind of go on further. Now, if we were trying to outrun it, I'm not sure how far these railings would go. And I think we would have to keep this up for quite a while before we find the end of it. But I mean, I'll give it a go. Skybox disappeared.
Yeah, I don't think we can outrun it. If, if we can, we have to go for a very long time because, yeah, nothing's really happening. More keeps spawning in, so let's go back to the train. Oh my god, we went for a really long time. That's the train! Woo! Now this behavior continues on to 5-Gold Train, which I decided to edit into a mystery box level so it doesn't go away when I test it. <laughs> now there's no other rail to check, but it works pretty much the same way. We can come over here, and it seems to be struggling if you're rolling long jump because of the momentum. As you can see, it's all fairly standard. We can drop off and die. Also, when we die in the Golden Express, uh, we can come back, but the music stops. We can just get all of the coins if we wanted to. I don't particularly. Next, we have Fuzzy Flood Mine, and this one is just hilarious. If I'm playing this level with the auto scroll, you kind of just get the feeling that there's so many fuzzies after you. But like, actually, as you can see by not having auto scroll, it's actually just a small, just a small cube of them. And they're also just incredibly stupid. So yeah, we can go after the fuzzies, in case you wanted to do that for whatever reason. Also, we can outrun the fuzzies if we want to, which I'll do after I get myself a tanuki suit. But yeah, we can outrun the fuzzies now, so you're probably wondering what about the second wave of fuzzies? Well, these just trigger when you get to the top. I thought it would be a timing thing. But no, as you can see, they've triggered, and we just have to run away from them as normal. Although it looks like... I wonder if you could get back down and avoid those, because it doesn't seem they go all the way down. I did try this before, and I couldn't. There's also the water version that's going to be found in World Flower, and again, we can just outrun them, even though it's water level, you know. Oh, dude, I got under them. I got under them. Oh my god. Oh. What? So our main escape route is going to be through these bricks here. And they spawn just once you've been up here, I think. So I'm going to come up and I'm just going to leave again. Yep, there they are. Oh god, these fuzzies. Oh no. Wait, I didn't think this through at all. Hang on. Okay, even though the main batch have gone, it's still blacked out. Now it's not blacked out anymore. So I think we can head up. Okay, so now, yeah, we can get a good look at it. Oh my god, this is so weird. It is just completely black. Look at them go, dude. This is so weird. I think they might be waiting for us to get over there so they can just keep on climbing. Now for sick dash tank. And this one isn't particularly interesting. It's just the kind of the same thing we already showed in two dash tank. But again, this goes out way further for some reason. I have no idea why it goes out so far. Like, is this the same model they use for the cutscene or something? Like, what, what is this, dude? And it's got this weird black texture. So I think what I'll do this time, something that we didn't do last time, is I'm just gonna wait. I'll see you guys in a few hundred seconds. Why are they facing the other way? Why, why, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Oh, you know what probably happened? They probably reached the end and then they just were walking back. Look at these guys. Hang on, I'm coming with them. Oh no, okay, they stopped precisely here. And then they just, what, what are you doing, guys? It seems they can only make it a certain distance away from the tank, and then they just sit and wait. But how much further do they have to walk? Not that far. It's like they're on lookout up ahead. It's like, yep, it's safe to come through. Yep, you, you can come through now. However, looking at what's to my left, I'm not sure if that's what they're actually doing. Yes, Bowser, yes, it is safe to keep walking this way. I repeat, it is safe, yes. Oh, now they're actually, now they're physically walking back. Okay, that's not something they normally do. Now they are actually walking back. Oh, and the tanks themselves have completely stopped now. So they do not go any further than this. These guys have successfully surveyed the land. Congratulations, I'm not even going to blow them up. Okay, let's see the damage then. There is a little split section. The tank doesn't really care about that though. I mean, I guess uh, some of it's on the ground. That'll do, I guess. Castle dash castle was just kind of the same thing. So now we're going to go on to Bowser dash train. Let's see what's back here. Here's something interesting. Like, what is this? Why is this here? <laughs> it is so random. And let's see how far back we can run before it ends. Can we even reach the end before the train leaves? It didn't look like we can. Yeah, there is the end, but I don't think we're going to make it. Okay, now we- Oh, oh no, we did not make it. <laughs> Next up is gonna be Star Dash 6. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about Bowser Dash Castle, the final boss? Well, I'm gonna make you watch some more mid-rolls first. Here's one. Here we are in Honeycomb Starway. And nothing particularly exciting. I mean, it's the top-down camera still. Uh, changing it to parallel didn't change that setting. So I, I guess there's some other setting that's making it top-down. If I can figure out what it is, maybe that can be a video in the future. But at the moment, I don't have a clue what setting that is. One thing we can see, though, is that these hexagons do come in due to proximity. 
is not attached to the auto scroll rail, which I was worried it would be, so that level's still possible to beat. Now, I'm not gonna bother showing you the world flower version of that level, because it's basically exactly the same. Let's go on to Cosmic Cannon Cluster, the final level, before we take on the final boss. So here we are in Star Dash 9, it's just a little auto scroll section, of course without the auto scroll, and it's 2D, so there isn't really much to see, but we can change the camera. And it looks pretty nifty. If the thumbnail's in this level, it's because I couldn't get it to work how I wanted in the other level. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna finish things off with the final boss of the game, because the final boss of the game is an auto-scroller level. Now, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to be able to remove the auto scroll from this boss quite easily, but I was. Hmm, this looks very interesting. Mm, I don't think I'm interested though, I think I'm gonna, um, nah. Yeah, if you do this, the music just stops and the game is totally fine with it. It's very interesting. But I guess it does make sense because they're in the speedrun of Mario 3D World. They do a really big jump from the top and they can activate the fight early. Why can they activate it early? Well, because every single instance of Meowza appearing is a separate Meowza. We covered this in the Making Every Boss Bigger video, so if you're interested in seeing more, definitely check that video out. It's the second half, which is where it gets interesting though. No music here for some reason. I, I, I kind of expected the music to activate for the second half, but it doesn't. So since the auto scroll isn't pushing us up, we can just go back down. Like, the game is totally okay with us doing this for some reason. I'm really surprised it's okay with us doing this. Now when the camera moves like that, you do tend to have to stall a little bit to stop yourself from dying. And I've never made it all the way down before, so it's going to be a first for us both, hopefully. Because with the camera changes, it can be a bit annoying. We are currently dealing with the cutscene camera, after all. Here we are, we have landed! And now it's playing the normal level music, for some reason. Can we just leave? No. Well, now the normal music is playing, so let's try going back down again. Bowser is now climbing, and we fall. <laughs> hey Bowser, see you later. Yeah, uh, I wasn't quick enough there. Hi again, how are you doing? <laughs> Bye Bowser. What about if I jump off this side? Oh, there is no this side. Oh no, there is secretly this side. Let's actually play the level for a bit now. You can come up here as you can see the badges spawn as they normally would. Of course, there's no auto scroll banding us though, so we can just go for it. And it didn't look like they start climbing until we specifically walk into this area. There they are, they're climbing now. They're climbing and they'll start destroying all of this green uh, stairs and stuff. We're gonna have to just go for it. The camera isn't gonna come with us. We can even see him in his little hidey hole there. And here we are at the top, before they've even gotten there. Oh yeah, now they're up here. Some of them are here. There we are, that's the last one. Nice to have you back. They haven't destroyed all the platforms though. I, 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 uh, the... Oh, hello. What happened if they start climbing up? Yeah, there they are. Now we're gonna drop back down. What's gonna happen? Are they just gonna go up? Yeah, I guess they're just going on adventure. Can we drop into that hole? Yeah, we can. Um, and there's actually floor down here. We can even come all the way in here. Even without the staircase, we can get up here. And when we get to a certain point, the camera's gonna lock us on so we can't get back down. But that's just show. It kind of ruins the illusion a little bit. It's not five meowses. It's like 20. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Oh, God. He knocks us down. So it doesn't really matter because there's no auto score. It doesn't matter. Bye. Final thing I think we'll do is let's try and beat all the Meowsers to the top of the tower and beat them before they get there. Hello, big lad. How you doing? There we are. So we beat Bowser before the other Meowsers came down. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe. We're doing daily Super Mario 3D World modding videos until the release of Bowser's Fury. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.